And now to our developing story. After a week of back and forth debate, members of parliament have finally passed the supplementary budget estimates. This will see Treasury draw 56 billion shillings from the consolidated fund to finance government expenditure. By passing the mini budget, 32 billion shillings will go to meet increased pay for teachers, lecturers, health workers and police. 6.7 billion shillings to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Now for the 30.7 uh, 30, 30 billion shillings to meet the government obligation but the main bone of contention for the legislators is the slashing of nearly 36.7 billion shillings fund that were to be shared amongst the 47 develop, uh, devolved units in the financial year starting June. Now the Minister for Finance Njeru Gidai was also expected to table the transition county revenue allocation bill, the division of the revenue bill, the county revenue allocation bill and the transition county appropriation bill. This was however pushed to the afternoon sitting with the Deputy Speaker Farah Malim a comp uh, compelling Gidai to appear before the Parliamentary Budget Committee. And and on that developing story where 56 billion shillings are supposed to be used for extra uh, budget, uh, government expenditure. And of course, uh, as you know by now, a supplementary budget is issued whenever uh, normal budgetary allocations are not sufficient to run government, uh, uh, government operations in that part. And so we will uh, bring you now, that happens to be a developing story, on just how Parliament using Treasury intends to use 56 billion shillings. So, Mr. Speaker, the same, same issues we were raising last time. One, the minister is contravening Article 205, secondly, of the Constitution. Secondly, this minister is giving the county government 6.8 billion, which is only 3.3%, instead of the 15% the Constitution provides, which is 30.4 billion. I don't, want to start, I don't know why my friend Duale does not want to understand. Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the 6.8 billion uh, which has been allocated for the four months is for wages administration expenses was on actual estimates which translates to about 15 billion Kenya shillings per month. The allocations for the last four months would translate to about 60 billion Kenya shillings which when compared to CRA proposals for allocation of that billion means that the allocation is actually 200% more than the proposed uh, formula by CRA. Mr. Speaker, the mistake I think my friend Wale is making is this, is there's need to, dis to make a distinction between allocations and transfers. And the difference between allocations and transfers, worth noting is that the 56 billion shillings that we are adding on top of uh, government expenditure is over and above the 1 trillion budget that was read in June. And so just just gives you a perspective of how much we're talking about. But just to paint a clearer picture, we're now joined in our newsroom by KTN's business reporter, Michael Karanja, to just paint a clearer picture of what exactly this means to the Kenyan economy. Karanja, speak to us. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Bonnie, for that. <clears throat> like uh, in the story that just preceded uh, uh, this interview, we're just showing you that uh, par Parliament has passed the 56.7 billion shillings that uh, Finance Minister Njeri Gudai presented in the supplementary budget. Now, just before even just uh, getting into that, you know, usually supplementary budget usually comes in in March, but uh, given that these are extraordinary times and that we're holding elections in March, that's why that we've seen we've seen the minister actually rushing against time before even parliament is dissolved to have this supplementary budget passed now this what it does just gives the government money to finance some of its government operations because uh, there we now you find like uh, 32 point 32 billion shillings will actually go towards paying teachers uh, police officers and doctors you'll remember that uh, last year at some point the actual there was actually upheaval by some of these people and that uh, their their pay Pay, there was a pay rise of almost up to 40 billion shillings now. What this does is that the 32 billion shillings will actually go towards paying them. And that wouldn't have happened if Parliament had uh, been dissolved before then. Then we see that another 3.2 billion shillings will go towards the construction of county headquarters. Now this has also, also been a very key, key issue. 
we are, we are we're going to a new system of government where now we'll have central government and also the, we'll have a devolved system of government, breaking away from what we usually use to the central government of way of doing business. Then from there we'll get uh, 6.7 billion shillings going to the inter, to the IEBC. Now this is basically just to help help it towards uh, funding the March 4th general elections, which also you know has been in the news for from time to time. Uh, from that, we'll get uh, 7.2 billion shillings going to the Kenya Defence Forces as they continue with their Operation uh, Linda, Linda Inchi. And you know, also, this is key to our security. But a key and a very interesting uh, allocation there was the 5 billion shillings that also goes to IEBC in the case of a runoff. Now, we see that the government is actually well prepared in terms of how it's going to deal with this in case that, uh, in case that we have a, a runoff uh, come after the March 4th general elections. But, uh, Interestingly enough, uh, what seems to be, uh, have been a kind of a bone of contention with most MPs when this came to Parliament last week was that uh, what has to do with the uh, county allocations. Now, most people felt that, uh, 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 that uh, Treasury had slashed the allocation for county governments by almost 32 billion shillings. Now, from what CRA had presented to Cabinet, CRA had presented almost 231 billion shillings to cabinet for approval for what it will need for setting up county governments but we find that treasury later approved 194 billion shillings now that only represents about a fifth of uh, national revenue whereas our CRA was going for about a third of all that now that also led to some heated debate in parliament now there were four other bills that were supposed to come after that there was a transition county allocation of revenue bill there was also the division of revenue bill that was supposed to come and the county the county allocation of revenue now all this happened to what deferred to the afternoon city and uh, finance minister jerry Gidai was actually coerced to appear before the parliamentary budget committee to actually present uh, his reasons behind why that uh, the, the budget that cra had asked for was slashed by such a colossal amount now we'll be staying on top of this story and we'll have more for you after the parliamentary sittings there this afternoon and we'll bring you this in our subsequent bulletins uh, back to you boni Many thanks, Karanja. Just painting a clearer picture of what exactly this means. But it is the question would be, why set up such a huge budget that we cannot meet in the first place? I know there were so many concerns initially that mm -hmm. the budget was over and above what we could afford, mm -hmm. the one trillion budget. And of course, Jerry Gidai trying to make excuses, mm -hmm. saying that it's not really allocations, it's it just transfers. transferring funds. Yeah. But, but then in the first place, what most analysts are saying is that even before we got to the position of a trillion shillings budget, we should have had uh, fiscal discipline to ensure that we cut our budget, uh, especially government expenditure, we're talking about government operations, that they can be reduced. Yes, health and, and, and security and all those may not be compromised, but surely there is a way we could have cut this before getting to a region we are doing over 50 billion shillings plus. Well, I'm sure tax analysts would have a lot to say, especially with regard to that and how we are going to finance it, because I think that's the most important thing here, that you and I are the people who have to pay for the supplementary budget. Mm -hmm.